This video is made possible by the support of CodeNotary.io, blockchain protected authenticity in your DevOps process. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to have a deeper look at Music SP, this very interesting operating system originally developed at McGill University in, uh, in Canada. And I already have a video on the subject. I think it was video um, number M42 and that was just a very uh, in introductory review of music uh, operating system of the music operating system for the mainframe and uh, over the last few days uh, professor René Ferland my mainframe friend up in Canada has produced an interesting video that goes much deeper into music SP and how to work with it and how to write applications for music SP and so we're going to look into this today music SP just as an introduction was released originally in uh, 1972 as uh, McGill University system for interactive computing or music and I think at the height it was adopted by about 200 250 universities if I'm not mistaken and uh, it had some very interesting and advanced features such as true multi user and multi uh, multi-programming or multitasking support it had a lot of compilers uh, for the time and also it had of course uh, the introduction of virtual memory one of the first operating systems to use virtual memory to address to extend the addressable uh, memory for processes but also to have protection for users it also was one of the first operating systems on the mainframe to work with TCP IP and so was one of the first uh, mainframes to be connected to email and to the internet. Uh, so everything else that I want to leave to Professor René Fernand, who's made an, a, a very interesting video. It's over an hour long, but if you're serious about discovering this amazing operating system music, then I suggest you watch René Fernand's video to the end. Over to you, René. Hi everyone, this is René from Montreal and today I'd like to make a video about the Music SP operating system. Now, Mushix already made a video about music, uh, but uh, since lately I've been playing with it and exploring it maybe a little bit further, and since I had fun doing so, I thought I could do a video about it, uh, being some kind of a second look at music where we're going to explore a little bit deeper what's going on with the system. Okay, so before I go, I'd like to warn you, <clears throat> have two warnings regarding music. First of all, Music SP, at least the demo system we have, is kind of a frozen system, or a system frozen in time, if you wish. Frozen in time because first that demo system, or that system goes back to the end of the 90s, probably, something like that. Frozen in time also because there is no uh, current version of music actually or currently running on a mainframe or in a shop or in a, uni a university or thing, uh, things like that. So it's, a, it's kind of a dead system or obsolete system. It's frozen in time also because the demo system we have, or which is available on the internet, was the pet project of a man named Dave Edwards, but unfortunately Dave passed away about 10 years ago. And since then, nobody took uh, uh, the system of <coughs> and Bart to uh, maintain the system. So what we have is what was available at the time of David's uh, death, <coughs> and there's nothing we can do further anymore. What it means, basically, is that if you use music for a uh, maybe a big project or something like that where it goes pretty far with the system it is possible not absolutely certain but possible that you're gonna reach some limitation of the system or some limits currently in the system and there uh, not there's nothing you can do about it because you cannot ask uh, David Edwards to 
look at this and possibly provide an update to, to the system to handle that, that, that situation. The source of the, the operating system is not available or not available at all. And it's pretty difficult, you know, to work on the, the, the underlying under the hood, you know, of that system. <clears throat> if you don't know what it is very <clears throat> deeply, and you don't know what you're talking about. So <clears throat> it means that possibly as a user, you, you can reach some limitations, but it's not absolutely certain. And I guess you can do a lot of, of things uh, with the music anyway. But uh, bear that in mind. Also, you have to realize that music was never designed, I believe, to be used for production work in a regular MVS shop, you know. <clears throat> it was a system designed in academia, McGill University, actually, and it was designed uh, for education purpose. It was a, a system designed to be easy to use for people who are learning programming, learning algorithmics, learning data structure and uh, structures and stuff like that. You know, And I learned personally uh, Pascal on music when I was uh, 20 years old. So that was a system used in university and in for education purpose. So that's going to show a little bit when we, uh, we use the system as you're going to see. So it's not the kind of system that you're going to use you know, to run big jobs with several steps and stuff like that, or at least not directly in the same, in the same way we do on MVS uh, actually. So, so bear that in mind, a system may be frozen a little bit, or obsolete or old frozen and academia and education, but still I believe that we can have pretty much fun with, uh, with music, it's very easy to use and it, there's a lot of stuff available on it and you can do, uh, I think, it's possibly an interesting project on it. It's worth a try. I mean, so so let's, uh, let's go with this, keeping that in mind. Let's go on with uh, uh, looking for music and see how it goes and how to make it work and how to log on and do stuff like that. So first of all, we need to download music. So we have to get a copy of that uh, demo system I was talking about. Uh, to do that, I guess the best way is to go first to Wikipedia and look for the entry on Music SP. It's worth reading that entry, as a matter of fact. You're gonna learn a little bit more about music. And then, of course, at the bottom, there are some external links. And there is one talking about <coughs> the SIM390 emulator. That's an emulator to specially designed to run the, the music operating system and you have the music SP demonstration system downloads here so open these two window the first one is about the emulator okay that's an emulator that uh, can be used to run music you can also execute music under Aculis but uh, when the David Edwards uh, started to create his demo system, he also had this uh, pet project of himself to write this emulator. That emulator is uh, less powerful than, uh, than uh, Hercules, but it has some advantage. Unfortunately, it runs only on Windows, but uh, let's explore this anyway. So on this page, you have a download uh, page there go there and then there is the last uh, version of it sim 390 version 1.7 so download this that's going to give you a zip file and on the other page which is the page of the music download that's uh, dave edwards own page still there there is a, a link to download here and then you have the first here Muse demo b.zip, that's the demo system. That's actually just a, a folder with basically one DASD. That's what it is. So download this. And I guess you should also download the manuals here, uh, which are very, uh, there's a lot of them and it's very complete and very well written. So it's going to help you very much if you want to work with uh, music. So maybe I leave it there for the moment. I'll discuss about the the updates uh, over here just in a few minutes so if you download the emulator and you download that music demo bzip there 
you'll end up with two zip. Now I'm gonna show you what to do with them on Windows. So let me go back to my remote desktop here. That's a remote desktop on my laptop, my Windows laptop running just by the side of my Macintosh. So if you download this, you end up with two uh, zip file as I said so of course you unzip them the first time so uh, extract all uh, okay extract the other one maybe I go to on my this way it's gonna be faster uh, all right so now we have this Folder SIM3970 and use the mode B. All right, so open this first one in a window. Okay, and the second one in a window too. Now you have two windows like this. As you can see, this uh, guy here, uh, that's the emulator. And this uh, this file here, use xd.vol, that's the DASD. So take the DASD here and put it there. Okay. And take also the file uh, printout and put it there. You can close this one. And then after that, you have this file, config sample uh, text change the name rename uh, for sim390.cfg and remove the text extension I was gonna complain but go ahead with this and then exit this guy <clears throat> to make some changes here that's the uh, can I see it? yeah Okay, so now edit this guy. So if you look at it, that's the sample configuration file for the uh, emulator. So first of all, there's this remote 3270 port, which is uh, 2023. So you can keep it if you want there, or you can change it to 3270 if that's your default port uh, for the, the clients, you know. And after that, if you go down here, you have the files over here for the printout and the music XD. So you can remove the, the path here because the files are in the same folder. That's good. And same thing here. Let me save this. And after that, go down. You have a bunch of uh, Telnet 3270 clients here, but there are, you miss a few, so you have to add a few more. If you don't add them, you will have error messages. They are harmless, but annoying. So let's do the thing so that we don't have those messages. So you just take this, you copy one, two, and then you go, you continue here. So seven, then eight, uh, maybe uh, right here so then nine then a uh, then b then c and go on up to f of course e then f and uh, save this that should be it so change the the port if you wish be sure that you remove the the leading path here and add these uh, remote connection and that should be it and that point you can now ipl your system you just double click on this on this emulator here okay so double click and here what happens you're gonna get to uh, window that window here okay so i'm taking this that's the emulator, okay, the SIM390 uh, emulator, and that's the console. Now, this is just a printing console, 
You cannot enter commands here. To enter a command, you have to use this menu here, input. For example, slash Q. And you're going to get an answer here or there. Okay. There are some uh, commands available. They are described in the documentation I mentioned in the manuals, you know. There is a manual for the administrations and manual for the user. So if you look carefully at it, you're going to see, a, you're going to get a section describing all these commands at some point. I'm going to talk about it later, maybe just to explain a little bit the documentation. So now you have a system uh, actually running. Uh, if you go in this file menu here, you see that there is a local 3270 session. So there is already in that emulator, you know, a, a program to emulate a 3270 connection, for example, like this. And then you got this uh, logo and you can actually uh, uh, make a logon. So you just press uh, enter and then you have the user ID password. So this is possible, but you can also uh, use a regular, though, I guess I'm gonna remove this local. You can use a regular, uh, let me close this for the moment, a regular 3270 client like a Vista, for example. Let's say I go there and I have this. Now, for the moment, when you have this new system, there is only one user, which is the super user. And the uh, user ID is dollar zero zero zero, and the password is music. You get this, press enter to continue. Then you have this, when you see more, just press enter again. And he wants to know if you accept the conditions, say yes. And, and then you get this menu, which is the administration main menu. I'll come back to it. Uh, I'll describe this a little bit more in a few minutes. <clears throat> it's not a good idea to use that user ID to develop a personal project because that's a user, it's kind of a super user that is used indeed for administration purpose. So it's better if you create a user ID for yourself and inside that user ID, you develop your own project. That's of course a better ID. And on music, it's very easy to create a user ID. So let me show you. First of all, you see there is an option two here working with user ID. So choose that one. Press enter and then you get a new menu, the user ID task menu. And the first one is to add a user, my user ID. So if you want to do this, press one. And then you're going to get a panel like this. And there are only two entries you want to, to give at that moment. This one, which is the user ID itself and the password over here. And you can move between the fields with the tab, of course, like a, a usual panel. So let's let's create maybe a user guest. And then I move with tab up to the password. And I use, let's say, pass for you as a password. If I leave blank, it's going to generate one, but then I will have to write it and be sure that I don't forget because <clears throat> I won't be able to access the code. All right, and then when I do that, I press enter, enter to accept here, as you can see. Command generated, enter next group if you want to create a new user ID or a new group of user ID. Uh, or F3 to create a user ID itself, we just create, a, we just uh, uh, propose for the moment, okay. And here's an example of the academia nature of the system you know there's a question here enter next group see because it was possible to define a group of user ids with a master user id and a bunch of slaves i guess user ids of things like that 
the master user ID would be given to a teacher and the, the, the other member of the group, so the slaves, if you wish, of the, the lower user ID would be given to the students. And it would be possible for the teacher to control a little bit what's going on with the, with the user IDs of the group. So this would be created for a short period of time and then destroyed for the next uh, semester or stuff like that. So that's where you see the, uh, the, the academic nature of the, the system. So since we don't want to create a group, but just use this guest, okay, so we're going to press uh, F3. Uh, we have something send root music here, and then it say press enter to continue, so let's press enter. We're back at that menu, and then there was a message to see what is going on with this message. Press F3 first, just to quit that menu and come back to the previous one, and then choose option 10. And then you have this message and there is a letter, you see V for view. So if you type the letter V over here, uh, am I at the right place? V, you see user IDs guess with password for it. This was uh, the message that was mentioned before, you know. So F3 to quit this, maybe D to delete then F3 to quit this and we're back at the main menu. All right, now we have created the user ID. So let's quit this, uh, this user, this uh, root user ID and try to log on onto the guest we just created. So X to quit and then off to log off. I think log off works too. And then I press enter, and then guest, and then pass for you. Now I'm going to be asked this. This happens only once. Okay, so they want me to give uh, my, full, my full name. You can write whatever you want, of course, over there, but maybe I write mine. So, Rene. Edward Ferla. And then I have an identification number. I guess at the time that was probably the, the uh, ID you got from the university, you know, the specific ID as a student, and you could give it there. It was not your account uh, or your user ID. It was something that would identify you as a student at the university at the time. So you can type whatever you want here. Let's say 34, 22, 67. Your name and ID have been registered. We're going to see that. And then you go and you end up with this full screen interface. I will describe this a little bit uh, in a few minutes because I don't want to continue working with this emulator anymore. Not too long because it's not as fast as I as I wish, and I would like to run music on Hercules on my Macintosh, so that's going to be uh, faster. So uh, let me quit this for the moment. So you do F3 as usual, and then off. If you want to come back, type F FSI. <clears throat> so it works like that. Okay. Now to go on with uh, the usage of music, I will go to my Macintosh, but maybe just before that, let's go back to uh, dollar zero 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 with the password music, enter. Now you see I don't have any, uh, I can go again to working with use, user ID two, and then there is option eight, uh, here, display list of user IDs. So let's choose eight. And then you see that the guest is there, this new, with my name, Rene Edward Fella, and the ID number that I just gave. Okay. And you see other users, the root one, and these guys, which are running uh, background tasks. I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. So, okay. 
I just wanted to do that. So I do again, PF3 to quit, PF3 to quit this one, X, and then off. All right. <clears throat> uh, now I'm gonna close this. Now suppose that I want to stop this and go on my Macintosh. So I want to shut down music. That's very easy to do. You go into the emulator like this, uh, and then you choose the input. And now you can type a command, a console command. They start with a slash. Well, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's not a bad idea to use it. Anyway, on New York, Hercules is going to do that. So we're going to send a message to the, the operating system with the slash anyway, like we do on MVS. So let's do that. And then you just do a stop. A more clean way would be to stop all the tasks here, the, 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 uh, the uh, telnet, uh, not the telnet, the internet daemon. Oh, maybe before I do that, uh, let's cancel. You see that there is there is an internet daemon here, okay? So it means that you can actually make connections to the outside world from music using that emulator. And you can also, as you can see, make the FTP connection to the system. So maybe I can show you that just quickly. So let me go back to... Uh, my guest operating system, not operating system, but my guest account, uh, pass for you. I'm gonna quit this, or I could use maybe this uh, futile, but let me quit this. I can tell net if I want, you know, for example, I can tell net, well, not immediately. Uh, I need to uh, a name server, so let me, well, maybe not. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start another one. Okay, so let's go into root over here. Uh, music. Enter. Uh, we're going to choose six right here. Then we have a Essentially, that's the equivalent of option 3.4 on ISPF or review front end. You know, you have the list of the uh, the files and the folders. You can see something about PL1, VSAM and st stuff like that. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, now, in the command here, type edit uh, $tcp uh, colon tcp ip dot config that's the uh, configuration file for tcp ip uh, you can adjust this thing but i'm gonna change the uh, the name server here so maybe i delete this mm. no not this one but this those are the addresses from uh, the mcgill university as a matter of fact Let's choose maybe a public name server here. So 8.8.8.8. This is the Google server. Uh, you can change this uh, later if you wish. And then <clears throat> F12, save, and then quit. Okay, so at this point, I should be able to make a telnet connection. Let's say to Mushix. Dynet, dynu.net, maybe on 32.80. And now I am connected to Mushix Cloud uh, VM system. I can connect, of course, uh, do a logon if I want. Uh, password, what's the password already? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, I'm alone on the system. Okay, so I do a log off. Works fine. Uh, and then 
enter and then exit and I'm back on music so it's perfectly possible to connect to the outside world you know from your your system using uh, telnet and FTP for that matter and it's possible to go the other way of course for example uh, let me quit this quit this and off this and then I can open say uh, a window like this and then I can do FTP and open E001 and I think the port is 621 and as you can see that's the FTP server of music so I can go guest uh, that was passed for you and I can look at the content there's nothing for the moment and I can <coughs> I can uh, transfer files and do whatever I want from from that moment and this is a real uh, FTP working perfectly fine with the uh, packets and everything okay so that's the advantage okay let me exit here maybe so that's the advantage of that uh, emulator because this way you can easily transfer files and make connections and things like that. There is even, as you can see here, uh, if we go further, you see that there is an HTTP uh, server too. So it's possible to, uh, to hold, not hold, but uh, to, to have a, I don't, I don't remember the, the the verb in English, sorry, but it's possible to have a website stored on music and use it. So if you have properly set up your music system in the cloud, something like that, you can easily uh, host, uh, that's the word, you can easily host a, a website on it. So that's one of the things you can do. But of course you have to run this with that emulator. But I guess the, the thing are relatively good if you have a, a powerful computer. All right, so now before I, I will continue on my Macintosh, so for the moment what I'm going to do is to just shut down the system. So one thing, as I said, you can do is just type the command uh, slash top like this, and it's going to stop everything. A better way would be to first stop the, uh, the, the uh, internet uh, daemon, then stop uh, the the background task and then stop the whole thing but it's not a danger if you do this so let's stop you get the accounting file the music is shut down and at the same time the CPU is stopped so go back to the emulator and then exit he's gonna ask you if you're sure say yes and that's it and your system is uh, is shut down so as you can see it's pretty easy to uh, IPL it with that emulator you just double click and it starts automatically and does everything and it's pretty easy also to stop it you just type slash stop and it's over essentially so that's a pretty easy system so it's already easy to IPL and IPL to shut down if you compare uh, with MVS 38J so uh, before I go, I'm going to switch now to my Macintosh. And instead of running it with uh, that emulator, I'm going to run it with uh, Hercules. Now, uh, Dave Edwards here, in, on his page, the, he has this, uh, I believe, if you come back here, there are miscellaneous documentations and web pages. And there in this document here, Hercules Note, that's a document that explains how to run music under Hercules. It's an old document, but still pretty good. And there is inside of it, just a little bit further here, I believe. Uh, let me check, oh, right there. You see that the, this is the Hercules sample configuration file. So it's, it's right there from here to there, essentially. So it's pretty short. So everything is explained to how to run it. Of course, if you run it, the problem, if you run it under Hercules, the problem is that that FTP server and that uh, internet daemon server is not going to work anymore because Hercules is not providing those facilities. 
but uh, if uh, <clears throat> but still you can use music with a more powerful uh, uh, emulator Hercules as such and uh, if you run music in a virtual machine under a VM properly set up, a VM ESA properly set up for TCP IP, then the, the, the internet daemon will work uh, properly. It's possible to do that. But if you run native on Hercules, then uh, you lose this uh, facility. Still, you can possibly use uh, transfer files with the card reader. And it's still possible maybe to transfer what you need <laughs> using the emulator SIM30 uh, SIM 3 to 390, and then after that, uh, use uh, Hercules if you wish. So, anyway, in uh, any case, what I did, I prepared uh, to. Oh, maybe before I go again, there's another thing I want to say. If you're here and the, in the download the page, you can see that there is a bunch of updates here. So, I just downloaded the the demo, the, the first version of the demo, but then Dave Edwards added a few updates to that system. Unfortunately, there is no uh, current version of the, the system with all the updates installed. I have such a version, so if you want to have it, just ask me. But then again, if you want to install them, there's a bunch of them, as you can see. Typically what you do, you have a zip file, this you unzip, that will create a music archive file. You then have to FTP that uh, file onto the system. That's the basically the only way to transfer it, unfortunately. And then once it's there, you install the update. There is a very good uh, document here, music update summaries. And I believe at the beginning here, there's a document info how to apply an update so it's very well documented but uh, if you're new to music maybe you're gonna find this a little bit uh, overwhelming so if you want a system where all these updates are already uh, installed just use this uh, just tell me and i'm gonna send you the, 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 such a system which can run either on hercules or the original emulator anyway all right so I think that's that's about it. So now I believe I can move to my uh, Hercules, my music render running under Hercules. So I won't need this thing. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe I put it here just in case. And then I come here. Uh, now I guess I am in this uh, folder over here already. So if I as you can see, I have this uh, the emulator here, the configuration file, and I have the Hercules configuration file and a run command to uh, start. Uh, this music, uh, xd.vol, that's the system with the updates all installed. I also have a copy of this, which I call music x.3370, because this is a this is not a CKD DASD, that's a FBA DASD, a file, uh, a fixed block architecture uh, DASD, and probably a 3370. So uh, it's possible to run with this one or the other one, uh, whatever you want. And uh, I also added another DASD to the system called Music Y, so that you have more space to. Uh, store your own uh, data sets if you wish. So uh, let's start the system under Hercules. So we just type Hercules like this. That will start Hercules and automatically IPL the system with the script. It's going to give the same kind of messages here. You can see that he find the, the system music X on unit 201 and music Y on unit 202. Then we have this, and then it tries to start, of course, this, the internet daemon, but that's not going to work under Hercules. So you can leave it there, but you're going to get uh, a, a, an error message from time to time every uh, two minutes, which is slightly annoying. So what you can do to avoid that is just cancel this uh, background task. So do the command slash cancel three. You get OK. And now you have only the system log in the O2 sub 
running and the internet daemon is no longer trying to make an initial call to TCP IP. But of course, TCP IP is no longer available. And now you can make connections. So I'm going to do that with maybe a generic uh, 3270 like this, a big one. So that's going to be easier to see. So connect. Uh, here it is. 3270. All right. Let's go into the guest account. The password pass for you. And now I don't have the um, the full screen interface. Now to uh, to eliminate the the automatic starting of the full screen interface, what you have to do is to change the profile of the account. So what you do, you just type the command. First, you quit the the full screen interface and when you are at the go prompt like this you type the command profile uh, you can do help if you want some help the command you have to enter is auto prog and then open parenthesis and closing parenthesis so there's no program to run essentially he's gonna ask for the the password so give the password and then change just type n to quit this and now you're okay but of course you can choose another program here instead of uh, the full screen interface your own interface as we're gonna do uh, in a few minutes okay so <clears throat> what can we do now so first of all there is no clear so we do this if i'm right what i like to use first is the library management screen so type flib and this gives you essentially the equivalent of option 3.4 on ISPF or review front end for those who knows about it uh, you get the list of the files here you move with the tab and this is a, a folder the not well yeah a directory so you can change the directory and there is a bunch of uh, programs here so these are my own additions they're not on the, the previous one and now because i have installed all the updates what the the languages uh, available in the system are essentially assembler basic uh, fortran g standard pascal pl1f rex and the uh, Waterloo compilers, that is Waterloo C, Waterloo COBOL, and Waterloo Fortran. So I have an example of all of them. So how it goes, let's let's pick this one, which is in what ball. So you move the, the cursor like this, and this is a, a, an unprotected field where you can type a command if you wish. So let's use the command is it. This will allow us to edit the file. What you see here is the program. There is the description of the PF keys. And then just before that, okay, you have these two statements. First one is include what ball. So that's the, the statement that will call the, uh, the compiler with all the libraries. And before you have an info card, that's how it's called. This is for batch execution. So I'll call, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, in a few minutes, okay? So, if you want to write a Wattball program and run it, you just type this in full information, include Wattball, and then you, you type the Wattball program. Let me use PF12 and then save and quit. And now, if you want to execute, just type execute, and it's going to execute the program interactive, okay? So he compiled, no statement flags in the command. Now he's going to execute, and that's the normal output of the program. Okay, and you have this more over here. So when you have more, just type uh, enter, and you're back here. Okay, so you can again see the the academic nature because typically a professor would give an assignment saying write a program to do this stuff, and the student would just edit a file like this programming progressively and running uh, the, the program interactively in the front of the, uh, the terminal. And if you want to uh, have a, a, a print copy of this, 
you can submit this uh, program to batch execution. So I can do E to edit. Then you see this info command or info card. That's for batch execution. You tell that you have uh, 120 service units, maximum of 50 page. And the output of this will go to the system that is uh, the, the printer actually. So let's submit. You just type the submit command in front. You see a certain number of records submitted to music and root system for the output. And over here in the console, you can see that the job has been run and batch is idle again, there's no job. Of course, if you want to see the output of this, you have to look at the printout, the, the, the printer uh, file. Now over here, you see that this uh, printer is on 00E as it is usually, and it's in the file printout.txt. So let's go there. Uh, desktop music. Uh, it's page printout. Now you see my job with the uh, the wet ball program over there with the, uh, the listing and the output we had before, you know. Okay. So you can uh, easily uh, replace that file by some program to produce a, a PDF if you want. My ecut command is working for this uh, this system, so I haven't installed it uh, here, but it's perfectly possible to to make it work and have a, an output if I want. Another thing you can do, instead of having the the output printed, you can go into some system like uh, SDSF. So just edit here and replace the root the route replace system by music. like this, F12, uh, save and quit. Submit again. You will have this message that your job has been uh, run, but the output's not gonna be uh, routed to the printer. It's gonna be routed to the output facility. So just type output like this, and here's your job. You can take a look. A little bit like SPSF, SDSF, you know, and you watch the result like this. <clears throat> now, before it was possible to, when I was a student, I remember it was possible to watch, to, to look at this and then choose, you know, option P here to print. But unfortunately here on this demo system, it doesn't work. So if you type P, it's not gonna print, unfortunately. So the only thing you can do is watch it. <laughs> View it, browse it, edit it if you want, and delete it, most probably. And if you are happy with it, you can run again with the, the route system to have a, a hard copy. Then you quit with F3 and you're back with this uh, library management screen. All right. So what you can do is that, now of course, if I quit this, uh, let me go back maybe. Uh, over here, let me see the back to the main. Then I quit. It's possible, you know, to do CD processor like this, and then type the name of the, the program. So instead of using the library management screen to execute and edit, you can of course type the command edit uh, lo.pl1 and make the edition and then type the name like this to execute okay and submit like this submit hello.pl1 no problem there so there's a bunch of commands available they are described in the documentation okay so uh, maybe i go this way and i go this way <clears throat> so here are the example for COBOL, the example for uh, what C. It's always the same, you know. Uh, view. Typically, you have this info card, then the include for the 
compiler and then the program. And if there are data, you just have a command slash data and the data afterwards. But it's perfectly possible, of course, to read from files and write to files and stuff like that. It's all described in the documentation, of course. And Rex is available. So you just include Rex and you do this and it's going to work. You know. So I don't know which version of Rex and what's available in this. There is a library of routines and stuff like that, but you have to read the documentation to know, to know, to know more. And I wouldn't be surprised that if you have a Rex program of your own and you try to run it, Directly, it's not going to work because this routine is not available or this or that, but still there is something that can be done. So uh, it's not negligible, you know. All right. Now, I would like to talk, uh, well, not, there's no clear command. Actually, it's possible to write one, but uh, it's not, there is no clear command on this uh, system. What I would like to discuss now Time goes on, but I, I'd like to do that anyway. Uh, so let me uh, start another window like this, maybe a smaller one. Because that's where I would like to provide some input for you. If you go, let's say, on 00, zero like this. Uh, now, on this system, I changed the, uh, the password to see you later, but that's fine. What we have here is a menu, okay? But it turns out that it's pretty easy on uh, music to create such a menu. It's very easy to create such a menu. So let me do that for the guest the guest uh, user ID here, so that we can replace this uh, default uh, full screen interface by uh, maybe a, a simpler menu, but more useful for us, okay? So where am I? You can do zero. That's fine. So let me do flib again. So how can you do this? You have to use a program called tmenu. It's described in the documentation, tailoring the user view. Okay. So let me show you how it goes. First of all, you create a file, exit. So we're going to create a main menu. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, music primary option menu. Okay, so I'm going to create a file named MPOM, Music Primary Option Menu. This is a new file, so I have to say edit uh, with the, the parameter new. Then I'm here in input mode. I will type in capital letters include, <coughs> sorry, T menu. Then I'm going to write my name equal, that's MPOM. And then F menu equal, and now the name of the menu. So let's call it mpom.menu. And that's it. Enter, enter again. Then F12, save and quit. Now I don't see my file, I just have to refresh. So F10, here it is. Now I'm going to edit a new file. Edit mpom.menu that's a new one and now I'm going to describe this menu here okay or the menu I want so I need to describe what kind of options I have okay so first of all I do this to say that's a menu file then I'm going to give the title of the menu that's going to be uh, music primary option menu. Then I'm going to give the elements here for my menu. So let's say one point uh, invoke profile for user ID settings. Second option will be a display file names uh, pattern a tree is gonna be display maybe output from batch execution then after that could be four but i'm gonna use h instead for uh, 
music help facility maybe topic and then x to exit okay so that's going to be my main menu now i have to give the command for each of these uh, items here so the first one so like this one i'm going to call profile in capital letters I'm gonna add a, a slash hair to say that this is a music command. Then for two, that's flib slash. Then for three, it's gonna be output slash. Then for H, it's gonna be help slash. And then for X, it's gonna be N, but not a slash because it's not the music command, but the, the T menu command like this enter another time enter then f12 save and end or quit that's about the same f10 to refresh and let's go here and execute this guy and here's the menu with all the options right away so it was pretty easy to do and it's gonna work you know I can do uh, 2, and here it is, F3, I can do 3, and here it is, the Muse job, so let's delete that, okay, back, now you see the pattern here, it's just, uh, if I want to give a, a path, so I can do 2 processors, like this, for example, and now I'm in the folder processor, but it's gonna remember, so if you do do, you're back here, so you have to change to star like this. A music help, of course, if you do this, here's the help. And you can choose a, a topic, so you can do tree editor. Uh, no, that's not tree, H editor, sorry. And then you have the help of the editor, okay. And I can exit if I want, All right? <clears throat> but more than that, if you go, let me continue. It's still a long time, but let me continue. Uh, if you go with two over here, working with user IDs, when we said one add a user ID, that we get this. And this is, this is not a menu, this is a panel, okay? But it turns out it's easy on music to create a panel, as easy as it is to create a menu like I did, okay? So let me show you how to create a panel, all right? So maybe I quit this because I don't need it anymore for off. Let me come back here. So if I want to create a panel, I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to use a command called panel. It's a utility available to any user. So in the documentation, you have a chapter on the utility programs. And at the end, you have this panel here, provides easy access to full screen IO from high level language. So that's create a panel. So let's do that. So let's start the command panel. And I get this, which is a panel actually, <laughs> creating and updating panels. So if I already have one, I can put it in input here, but if I'm creating one, uh, <clears throat> just specify the output. So the name I'm gonna specify here is the name of the file, actually an object module that will contain all the instructions to display the panel and perform the IO uh, to that panel from a program, okay? So let me call this panel, let's say TEP for Telnet entry panel, maybe. And then I type enter and I get this uh, flat screen where there's nothing. So what do I do now? I'm going to enter all the fields of my panel. Okay, so I have, of course, to design my panel first and say what are the fields and where they are located on the, on the screen. But once I have that, I just type those uh, fields on the screen here. Remember that a, screen, uh, a field on a 3270 
There's a bunch of character, essentially, or space, or uh, locations, if you wish. But just in front of that field, there is a special uh, a character that is used to design or to to tell the system what kind of uh, what kind of field it is, whether it is a unprotected field or protected field or highlight or not. So. What it means is that on the on the screen like this, if you want to have two different fields, you must be sure that they are separated by at least two characters. Okay, so let me enter the field, the fields. Let's say for a telnet entry panel. So first of all, I'm gonna have let's say a bunch of uh, of a dash. One, two. Whoops, that's protected. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. Then uh, telnet entry panel one two two spaces at least one two three four five six seven then I move with tab not enter tab uh, let's say IP address whoop one two uh, Bang, bang, click, one, two. Now I want a field, an unprotected field, to be able to write the address. So an unprotected field is defined by underscore. So let me do the underscore here, like this. Then the port, and I go this way, like this. One, two, let's say one, two, three, four, five. And then something like this. And then maybe PF keys. One, two, one, help. One, two, three, uh, exit. One, two, enter, accept. So this is my panel. Okay. Now, that I'm done, I press enter and you see a change of color. What's in blue are essentially protected uh, fields and what you have in red are unprotected fields where you can write some stuff, okay? And at this point you can also choose to highlight or not some of these fields. So maybe you can highlight this one. So you just move the cursor and then press F6 and let me highlight this one too, F6, and maybe to see what it is, let's highlight the port too, F6, it's going to change to green like this, so red is unprotected, no highlight, green is unprotected, highlight, blue is protected, not highlight, and white is protected, highlight, that's what it is. When you're done like this, Press F3, and now give the name of the routine, because this is an object module, like I said. So you're going to call this object module from a program, either a COBOL program, or a Fortran program, or a PL1 program, or a REX program, for that matter. So you need a name for the, for the, for the routine. So let's say in Fortran, you need to say call TEP to get the information to display the the the, uh, the panel and get the information for it. So let's use the same name maybe, and then caps convert input to uppercase. Let's say no, and then enter is to end this thing. We're back here. We have a TEP C even TEP. That's fine, and then you just press F3. Now I'm going to uh, update, uh, refresh. So I have this TEP, maybe uh, as, uh, now that I think about it, this is an object module, you know, if I try to view it, you can see this is a standard uh, object module in the, in the mainframe with this uh, ESD section and this uh, TXT section and so on. Okay, so maybe to just to remind us that this is a uh, an object module. Maybe we change the name here to TEP.OBG. So let's rename 
as you can see, this is a panel with uh, <coughs> protected and not protected on highlight. So TP OBG. All right. Then F3. Then re refresh. Now, of course, I cannot run this thing because it's just a, a routine. So I need a, a program that's going to call this, uh, this routine, okay? To display the menu and read, uh, the, display the panel and uh, process the fields, okay? So let me do it in Rex, maybe, okay? So that's pretty simple, as you're going to see. Uh, let's edit maybe TP new now. Of course, that's a Rex, so let's include Rex. Uh, Rex. Uh, panel. GE bleed display routine or something like that. Okay. And then remember there are two fields, the IP address and the, the port, so you can define them and have default value for them. So let's do that. You have to use variables with capital letters, if I'm right. So IP address equal, let's say, uh, 17001. Let's use a port 3270. And maybe a command, which is going to be a telnet. And then call the panel. So in Rex, you don't do call the TEP like this. What you have to do is use the panel command itself. So you put it in between the quote and in capital letters. So panel, the name is tp.obg with the variables IP address port okay so let let's stop here for the moment maybe so enter enter another time uh, f12 save and quit refresh now let's execute this guy and see what happened here's my my panel with the default values already there and if I enter, I accept it. Of course, I don't do anything with it. So let me do something with it, maybe. So there are different ways to, uh, to check if how you, you, you left the panel, OK? So I can either use Enter to use the, the values. Or I can do F3 to exit without doing anything. So there is a variable that gives the kind of output. It's called uh, AID. So let's say if AID equal three, then uh, exit. We don't do anything. Uh, but if not, if we have entered, so let's do the command with the address and the, the port. Okay. Now, of course, the telnet is not going to work outside the world here because uh, uh, because the telnet server that's not working. But I believe I can call it. But anyway, if it's, if it's not working, it's going to try it and fail. But that's OK. So uh, let me go F12, save and quit. And let's try to do this. OK, so. If I do this and enter, it's tried to connect to Telnet, but it's not working because the internet daemon is not working, of course. But if I have a use <laughs> that is working properly with the, uh, the SIM390 emulator, it's going to work. Okay. But of course, if I do E like this, uh, not E, but execute, and then I type exit instead here, uh, F3. Now he's not calling FTP because he just exit before calling FTP. Of course, I can do the following. Let's say instead of trying to call Telnet, I can see something like this. Uh, IP address port F12 save 
quit and then X and say mushiksdinu.net and as you can see I have the proper the proper name and the proper port here to perform the command telnet so it has been properly uh, transmitted so it's pretty easy to uh, create <laughs> and so you can edit this thing on my calling panel again and then you can change it I guess hopefully oh that's protected so you had to change so the documentation is somewhere but I know that uh, editing a, a panel is it's possible but you have to be uh, to use some commands for this but unfortunately for us uh, I believe that's no not these ones yeah this one so if I go to panel let me go to panel quickly uh, I, yep, yep, yep. Oh, 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 oh. here it is okay so that's full crane panel generator there's a lot of documentation developing modifying you have these keys here to delete truncate change and things like that and then there are examples on how to modify a panel and how to store a panel and of course how to access a panel from a program with the different uh, uh, variables the input output uh, area and then there are examples so they have an example with this panel here which is pretty much like the very very similar to mine and there is how to do it with COBOL how to do it with Fortran here how to do it with PL1 and how to do it with Rex over here in this example okay so <clears throat> there is a, a lot of documentation on panel and there is a documentation on Rex and there is a document <laughs> documentation on the the uh, the, uh, the different languages you know so it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy to uh, to use a panel you know so to, to display the panel and then use a program to uh, to handle the information transfer uh, transferred by the panel and behave the proper way given the kind of pf keys that was used to quit the panel so that that's fine uh, so that's what I wanted the most to see you how to create a menu like this and of course you can once you know that you can add to these options a panel if you wish exactly like we have on the uh, on the uh, super azure account <coughs> uh, it's pretty easy like this, like this and then you realize now <laughs> that this screen is this library management screen is actually a panel because what's in blue is protected what's in white is protected highlight what's in red here is unprotected and what's in green is unprotected highlight actually you can write something here if you want huh? as you can see it's not protected of course it's not going to do anything because the program handling the panel does not react when you change what's over there okay uh, but over here there is an underscore normally a, a, a field at the beginning it's not given by an underscore like this you have to store the underscore as the default value so that you can write because if I type you see that the underscore disappear so it's just writing over the underscore and actually there are more uh, fields over here if you move with tab you can see that there are more fields so if I do for example exit and TEP here I am in the program okay so <laughs> these are two fields these are not invisible fields they are fields filled with blanks because the of course the the, the number of files available in the in a user account depends it's a variable number so they just uh, you know uh, probably create a list and update probably update uh, accordingly the panels with the default values for the, the the files that are already there 
versus those which are not yet there okay so this this clock here <clears throat> is frozen it's the one that when i call because if i refresh it's going to be a, a new a new value okay uh, this number here has also refresh when i, I press uh, f10 and so on so this is a panel and of course, FSI is a panel, a more sophisticated one. I don't know how they get this color over here. It's probably something more. <clears throat> but of course, the admin we had before is a, is a panel. There's a lot of things that are a panel. Of course, when we did Elflib, remember, and I tried to rename this, he opened a new panel to perform the rename. This is uh, replace I guess so it's unprotected <laughs> no highlight this is unprotected highlight and you can change the name and given the information in this panel is going to rename the properly the uh, the file so that, that and of course uh, whenever you have this command edit here and you press enter which gonna accept the input He's going to realize that you want to edit this file, so he's going to start the editor for you. And when you do F3, then he's going, he's going back to the panel, exactly like we, we had. So, <clears throat> as you can see, there's already a lot of stuff that are given by panels and music, which are essentially the, the panels developed with this program, most probably. Okay, so, and that's it. So... Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell. <clears throat> uh, there's a few other things I'm going to go through uh, uh, in the last 10 minutes, maybe, I hope. Uh, first of all, I, I told you how to, a little bit, how to create programs and run them, okay, and which languages uh, are available, so that's fine. I gave you an example of how to create a menu and how to create a panel and operate a panel. There are other utilities, you know. So if you look at the documentation here, there's a description of the documentation, the different manuals. There is an administrator guide, easy to read, that explains how to use the account there is an administrator uh, reference, which is a complete description of uh, the system from the administrative point of view. There is a part called utilities here and the, the, not this one, over here, I believe. No, not that one either. It's the part, uh, well, this one. So these are the system utilities for the super user. There's a lot of them that, which are not working but there's also a lot of them which are working how to create backups how to do stuff so as you can see there's a bunch of them here and they're all described so it's fun to explore which one are working and how you can do with this it's possible you have also some utility for the normal user the plain user that's the uh, tone or the volume six and let me go to the documentation because i think i closed it uh, music here, manuals, this one, all right, uh, utilities. So the first one may be worth mentioning is uh, access method service. So it's perfectly possible to create vSAM data sets on music and read from uh, store data and vSAM data sets, uh, read the system with vSAM data sets, update records, do all kinds of stuff. And there's a complete chapter about it. There are uh, definitions, uh, stuff like that. It, it goes on music pretty much like uh, the access method services on uh, VM370. You have the bunch of commands available with all the documentation of each of them with examples for each of them. Okay, so you can do that. There are some other utilities, you know, debugging, uh, you can work with uh, tapes, I believe. There, there is also a utility. Uh, let me check. Uh, DS list, DS copy, uh, DS set, blah blah blah. blah. Uh, 
I believe there's a utility which is a fun called util that can transfer files between the system and and music using the card reader. You can also use this to print files if you wish, because the print command is not going to work. Anyway, so you have uh, some <coughs> uh, utilities for the general user. There is this polysolve command that you can do to do some computations, profile of course. So this is available to you. And as I said, you can see also over here, let me come back off. Now, if I go to this guy, uh, see you later, and I quit, flib. you can see maybe a four like this. You can see that there is a Rex VSAM and a PL1F VSAM, which means that it's possible from Rex to access a VSAM dataset and perform IU to a VSAM dataset. Uh, data set and it's possible to do so also for PL1F. Okay, so if you look in this documentation of these folders There is a document here. That's actually a, I believe a, a Word document So uh, I created a PDF with it and it explains how to uh, use vSAM data sets uh, and to PL1F Whoops, sorry a flip and then a CD like this. And for Rex VSAM, that's the same, that's about the same. If you go here, there's a document listing, Rex VSAM listing. I printed this with the uh, control characters and created a PDF with it. So it, it explains how to use uh, VSAM with Rex. Okay. So, uh, these documents I have, I believe, here. Uh, not here, not there, but over here on my demo system, right here. So here's the PL1 document, okay, PL1 VSAM, and there is one for Rex also. So Rex uh, VSAM user guide, and it explains everything, so you can do that. All right. I also provide here a, a directory entry if you want to run music under the proper VM system. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and maybe one last thing, uh, two last things, sorry. It's possible to use tapes and there's a utility, a system utility here. Uh, no, that's the editor, chapter on the editor. Uh, this one. Yeah, that's the one. There is a system utility here. Uh, no, let me go further this way. Uh, ah, here it is. Uh, that's restored. There is a system utility called uh, <coughs> load PDS and move PDS. So these can be used to restore files from a tape produced either by IEB copy or IEH uh, move utility. So if you are on, on MVS38J and you have a partition data set, you can create a tape with it, you know, using IEB copy or IEH move. Uh, and then you can take this tape and restore the content of it using this uh, utility on music and it works. I tried it. So it's probably one way to transfer data from uh, from uh, not from MVS 3HJ to music and maybe it's possible also to to transfer to some data uh, to music via MVS 3HJ because there is an FTP that works on F an MVS 3HJ so maybe if you have a bunch of uh, of, uh, of files you can create a PDS. Uh, and store all of them in a PDS, then create a tape and then read that tape on music and that's the way to transfer all these uh, these members or all these programs or stuff like that uh, without using the FTP and then uh, the FTP demon of uh, music and just the tapes, you know, that's, that's one possibility. There is also something called Tape Util 
I don't see it. Oh yeah, it's here. Tape or tap util. This is a program that's gonna read a tape and try to identify what's on the tape. So it's quite interesting, and you're gonna see if you run it for a for a tape produced by uh, MVS 3 ha is normally able to recognize what's on the tape and tell you what's going on, so that you can use now the utility like load PDS or move PDS to properly uh, read the tape. And finally, uh, a word about the card reader. There is a card reader. Uh, I believe I have a few jobs here. So I created here a job, two jobs. One over here is to, let's do that. This is just to transfer a file to music using the card reader. So there you have to use this program util and specify a file name over here for your file and then provide the records here or the, the lines of your files. And then you submit this to the card reader. So you dev in it the card reader of music and he's gonna run this job in batch and produce the file and you can do the same to print uh, like this uh, this would be submitted from the card reader so you can from the card reader submit a job to print the file but of course you can also submit it from the uh, the go prompt or the the flip menu you use again the uh, the util program to transfer a file from music to the card reader <coughs> not the card reader but the printer so that's uh, that's actually something i took from the the, the yahoo group of uh, dave edwards at the time so he, he showed how to print on music so it's possible to use a card reader and for simple uh, uh, transfer and i assume it must be possible also to transfer archives you know, the archives, the music archives that we are supposed to transfer with FTP, that's easy to do if it works. I believe it's possible to transfer them with the card reader too, but we would have to use such a job in IPSEDZIC, you know, so we would need to write the statements like this, those of this job here, you know, replace the records by the, the binary file, basically, the binary uh, IPSEDZIC file of the MF uh, arc, uh, archive, but all these commands would be uh, have to be uh, stored in a, a, a data set, not a data set, but a file in IPSEDIC. And so if I have these things, these statements in a file in IPSEDIC, then my archive, then another file in IPSEDIC for this command, then I can definite the, the card reader like I do on uh, VM370, you know, to transfer a VMark. I could do probably do that. So you would have your um, header file, your V and your archive file and your trailer file. If all these can be uh, can be stored in EPSEDIC, then you dev in it in EPSEDIC, and I would pretty pretty sure that it's possible to transfer the 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 archive this way. But unfortunately, I don't have an editor to produce these cards in EPSEDIC. And, uh, but if you know how to do it, you know, try it and most probably it's going to work. So, okay, so I've been talking one hour and a half. It's a long time. So I hope you had fun and you learned from it. There's a lot of languages available. It's possible to create cute menus for to work on this. It's possible to create panels. You can use these panels from different languages. PL1 is probably the best choice in my opinion. And it's possible to use VSAM datasets in programs, therefore in panels, most probably, you know. So given that, I guess you can probably uh, develop a, a nice project, you know, where you have these panels and you move among them to perform the task you are interested in. And you can do this, uh, to something pretty similar to CICS, I guess. Probably not as powerful as a CICS or Kix for that matter, but maybe you can do something. And I can imagine myself, you know, doing such a project easily. I use music for the for my statistical stuff, but I could organize this statistical stuff, uh, you know, easily with menus and stuff like that, and specify the the source file and which 
procedure I want to use and what kind of program in BMDP I want to use to analyze this particular file and it would most probably work uh, pretty well. All right, so I hope you're gonna try it. I encourage you to download the system. If you want my version, my uh, complete version with some documentation, these, uh, these uh, disks and so on, uh, just tell me, I'm going to create a zip and send it to you, you know. And I encourage you to read the documentation of music because it's very well written, easy to read, and you're going to learn a lot of things on how to use the system. And I think it's a, it's a fun system to try. So I'll leave you there and uh, see you the next time, possibly. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, René. This was very interesting. I've been following uh, as you explained in your video and I've made some of my own uh, experiments with it. Uh, this is very interesting. As you know, um, there are really two versions of MVSP you can find out on the internet. One is Music SP 6.1, which is the one that Rene outlined in this video. And I also use a version, a slightly older version called 5.3. Uh, which uh, has fewer capabilities, especially when it comes to TCP IP, but uh, has also other interesting things installed, like uh, more interesting compilers and uh, and, the other, and the other stuff. I don't want to go into that too much uh, here. But anyway, this was very interesting, and uh, especially the panel feature. I, I'm amazed how easy music makes it. Of course, TSO has also some very interesting panel features and I have some videos about it in this channel and more to be released soon but uh, this was this was very very interesting so thank you Renee for this amazing video I hope you'll be sending many more uh, as you know you're highly respected here in the Moshiks mainframe channel by the community and so we look forward to more of your interesting videos thank you all for watching if you have any questions of course then you can post the comments below this video I'm sure that Professor René Ferland will answer them diligently any comments any change requests, any any observations, please uh, post them below this video. If you like this particular video and the effort uh, put in here by Rene, then please uh, press on the thumbs up button and come back soon. Thank you. Goodbye.